Hey everyone, John from Marco Learning. I'm live talking about this year's AP scores, which are gonna be back on Wednesday, July 21st. They're gonna be available for all of you on the uh, AP login that you have with College Board. I'm super excited that you're all here with me. I encourage you, if you like this video, press that like button, definitely subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. So the scores are coming in less than 48 hours for everyone who took the administration one and two exams. That was in early May. Now I posted on the Marco Learning Twitter account, which you should definitely go check out if you have not yet, some really interesting data and information we have. Um, and so I wanna share this with you. We saw um, basically what's gone down with AP exams this year. So we know AP exams are huge. They've been bi the biggest standardized testing program for years. We knew that just before the pandemic happened, there were 5.3 million exams. Um, and now we see what went down on this year's exam. So let's go to this page. The College Board has released a lot of information for us about what went on in this year's exams. And one of the first things that we saw on this post, I'm gonna go down right here, um, is this. So this is from Trevor Packer, the head of the program. And take a look at what he said here, that is, as expected, we're seeing wrong answers from students who violated testing regulations by attempting to use a second device to Google the correct answers while taking the digital exam at home. In other words, the bunch of people tried to cheat, but the College Board tried to get around this cheating by making sure that people um, were, um, you know, not by rigging the questions basically so that you guys could not use a device while they're taking it. So look at this, it says, maybe I'll zoom in here. Yeah, let's get this nice and big. Um, okay, look at this. The college professors who wrote this year's questions crafted them in such a way that incorrect response options could include words and phrases that would appear in internet searches if a student Googled keywords from the question. So what this is saying, and this is from the College Board's website, I'm going to post this in the chat. I see, by the way, some of you are coming in in the chat. Um, let me know which AP uh, scores you are expecting to get. Um, and let me go ahead and log in here. Um, and I'm gonna post this for you. Um, and let's see here. So that link that I've just posted in the chat is the link to the College Board's information. But um, which AP exams you did you guys take? Are you waiting for it? Did you take the June test? Bottom line is that for this year's exams, we are, um, we're seeing that there were fewer people who took it and we're seeing that the College Board tried to make the digital exams harder to cheat on. We'll see whether they actually succeeded in this, but that's an important thing. And I see, by the way, Jacob, you're waiting for, waiting for Human Geo and Seminar, Tyler, AP Chem, um, called Game, I'm waiting for AP World. I wish, I do wish you luck. AP World, US, Studio Art. So one thing that's important, blah, 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 data from the College Board, Trevor Packers updates Marco Learning. The most important thing you need to know this week is that your AP score actually doesn't matter if it's bad. A bad AP score, you might have seen us post about this here on YouTube or on our TikTok. A bad AP score literally has almost no consequences for you because you can hide a bad AP score. You can not send the scores at all. You can um, keep it as your own little secret. Um, and this is one of the key advantages. I want to show you something. If you Google um, AP score withholding form, I'm going to do this with you so you can see how easy this is. So here I am, ready? Watch this. AP score withholding form. Okay, Google it. Oh, look, here it is. You can just withhold scores from any future college that you're applying to. If you're willing to pay $10 per, per score, the, the, the whole score goes away. And again, a lot of colleges aren't even gonna be using AP scores as a key part of your admissions process. So if you got a high score in an AP exam, good for you. That's a great moment in your life. If you got a mediocre AP score, well, that's kind of a mixed bag. If you got a low AP score, it's just not as bad as a low grade or low SAT. So really, you are not defined by this score. Your success as a student, your value as a human being, your future college admissions, all those things don't really 
aren't really at stake. But if you succeeded on getting that goal score you wanted, you really wanted to get that three or that five or whatever, then good for you. You have a shot at earning college credits. I went to NYU back a million years ago. I graduated one whole year early because I had AP credits. So I hope everyone who's here manifests or whatever, a four or a five, but you don't need it it on every single test and you may not have gotten it this year. So that's just a word of encouragement for you. you you've been through a pandemic. There's a lot of other stressors going on in your life. You don't need to worry about that. Um, and I'm seeing, by the way, a whole range of exams here, psych, Spanish, world history, et cetera. Um, I want you guys, if you don't have to uh, necessarily post this, but if you want to, what are your goal scores for these exams? Are you looking for the passing score of a three? You'd be happy with a three, or are you looking for that four or that five? Let me know in the chat. And while you do, if you're liking this video, press that like button for me, definitely subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great content for you. While you guys are posting your dream scores in the chat, I'm gonna come back to the data from this year. Again, I posted this on the Marco Learning Twitter and we see some interesting things. We can see excluding the June exam so far, there's been a big decline from the 2019 exams, the pre-pandemic exams. And that's something that I analyzed in this thread. Um, the other thing that I wanna show you all, and this is in this page, is let's go, for example, for those of you who took AP US history, we do have the aggregate results. We don't have your individual scores, but we do know what went on overall. I see a lot of people talking about threes, fours. This is great. That's a great goal to set for yourself. There's no reason to be thinking like too much about, I need to get a five or whatever. Like very few people got that. In fact, let's take a look at AP US for all my AP US people. Only 11% of people got a five on this year's exam compared to pre-pandemic numbers of 12%. Even fewer here, 2% got a fewer, got a four. And 3% fewer got a three. So overall, in terms of quote unquote passing scores, we're seeing one, two, three, four, five, six points uh, lower for total pass rates. So 52% of people, the majority of America's AP US history test takers did not get above a two on this exam. So if you all do get a three, four, or five, great, you've, you've, you've surpassed this. Um, this is, by the way, again, for the May exams, not the June exam. Now, a couple of things that they pointed out, and this is really interesting. I'm gonna skip over some stuff and get to this, okay. On the DBQ, which was about economic growth after World War II, notice 79% of people got the thesis point. 52% earned the contextualization point. That's really great overall. And only 5% um, of people got the complexity point. So when Tom Ritchie and I were doing live reviews talking about like, you guys should not be worried about the unicorn point or worried about the complexity point, we were right. You weren't going to get it. 95% of people didn't get it. And you certainly didn't need it to get a five because 11% of people got a five. Let's do the same thing, but with AP English literature, because I thought there were some interesting results here. And then I'm going to show you AP world for all. I got a lot of world people here. Let me know which exams you want to take a look at, and I can pull those up for you. Okay, so here's the English lit. Look at looky here. I'm going to scroll down to the free response. Okay, sophistication point. Marco Learning, we had articles about this. We had videos. On, on essay one, the poetry essay, only 7% of people earn that sophistication point. On essay number two, which was about Winton's breath, only 6% of people earn the sophistication point. And on essay three, that one about houses, only 5% of test takers were awarded the sophistication point. So very hard to earn these top points. You don't wanna be, whenever you're taking a standardized test, preparing for anything, don't necessarily shoot for perfection, shoot for the best that you can do. So um, let's see, chemistry, bio. Now they have not put anything up yet for chemistry. Um, and we just did a little bit with lit, but I'm gonna pull up Lang here, uh, rather AP Spanish Lang for you all. So, and I hope that this is useful for you, taking a look at what we know about the tests. Again, individual exams are gonna come out in two days on Wednesday, June 21st for everyone who took the exam in May. So here, aquí tenemos AP Spanish language 2021 edition. Um, y mira este, antes en do, uh, 2019, 25%. Here, 8% fewer earned that five in AP Spanish. They've made it tougher. Um, 
And let's see, it says students did incredibly well on the conversation on the theme of la vida contemporánea. contemporánea. Um, almost 25% of students got a perfect score, but performance was also strong throughout. Um, beauty and aesthetics, students did really well. 10% of people got every beauty and aesthetic question uh, correct. So we don't really have a ton of information compared to other exams. I promise you AP World, let me show you guys this. Uh, let's go to World. This was really interesting. I wanna show you the LEQs for World. Look at this. If you did the Afro-Eurasian trade long essay question, which was the most popular, 57% of people chose this on the paper exam, only 21% of people earned the contextualization point. So that is really incredible um, that I think, you know, we saw in the AP US much higher rates. Look at this, uh, the DBQ though, only 30% of people earned the contextualization point on that Mexican Revolution DBQ. That was a tough essay. Vast majority of people got the thesis point, not the vast majority got the contextualization point. So 2% um, earned the complexity point. So I'm just gonna repeat that out loud. If you took AB World and you had the Mexican Revolution DBQ, only 30% of people got the contextualization, which is really hard. And only 2% only got the, the unicorn point, the complexity point. And let me see, psychology is out. Let's take a look at this because I'm getting some requests for this. Notice again, oof, psychology dipped. Back in before the pandemic, 20% of y'all got a five. It's only 15% now. Look at a one. 22% of people got a one in 2019, 31% of people got a one this year. That's, sorry, that's pretty scary. Um, so 8% of students scored super high on that first free response, 5% of students, 10% of students on those. Um, now here's one question we're getting a lot of. Um, the, uh, I'm gonna do AP, um, yeah, I'll do AP Human Geo for you guys and AP, um, what's the other one I just saw, Euro. Okay, look at this. For those of you who took a digital exam, let me know in the chat, which of you took the digital exam um, this year in May? If you took the digital exam in May, then these results are what they're talking about. If you took the digital exam in June, we really don't know anything about those yet. I don't even think they've been finished scoring. So look at this, let's see what it says. Um, each version of the exam had to be analyzed separately by psychometricians, whatever that is, to identify its unique difficulty so that standard, uh, standards for scores of three, four, and five could then be separately identified for each exam version. They looked at the different mode. Um, and look at what it says here. For sections of the exam that proved easier to take digitally, the digital versions required more points. So when it seemed like a digital version, there were multiple ones, when it seemed like a digital version was easier, they docked points and made it harder to get that five. Um, for ones where it seemed easier on paper, they docked those points. So there's an adjustment there. They don't officially call it curving or norming, but all the psychometricians, all the people with PhDs and psychometricness they all sit around with coffees to like talking to each other and they come up with the, what they call the cut scores, where they're gonna slot you all in. So you're being judged um, relative to the overall kind of cohort that you took the exam with, but not in a strictly like curved way, if that makes sense. So, um, and by the way, it's great to see so many people here with me in the middle of July. Um, I hope you all on Wednesday do incredibly well on these AP exams as a friendly reminder from what I said earlier, high AP scores are great because you can skip requirements, earn college credits in high school, incredible. Mediocre AP scores are just kind of meh, they don't really do anything. And low AP scores mean nothing because you can choose to not send your scores, you can choose to hide your scores, you can choose to um, you know, curate the kind of scores you send off to colleges because you control your own destiny. So I just really want to encourage you all. There is no bad news except a missed opportunity for you if you didn't get a super high score. Okay. Um, and all, thank you, Jeremiah. Um, we, we tried our best here at Marco Learning to help you guys. So it should be Wednesday. <clears throat> and I believe it's something as soon as 7 or 8 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and I did promise Euro and, and I see some requests for from computer science principles. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Um, 
for the few of you who took AP European history, and it was pretty low, actually, the AP Euro rates. Let's go to European history. A couple things. Those of you who saw that DBQ, um, you can take a look at here, that DBQ on British imperial rule in India and liberalism. People panicking, people freaking out. What's liberalism? What's India? 80% of you guys got that thesis point. 55% earned the contextualization points. A really strong performance. AP Euro students performed better than AP US and world students in earning the points. Not the complexity point, um, but on the long essay question, look at this. 60% of you all on that first long essay question, if you did the one on the printing press, which looks like, wow, most people did do, 60% of people earned thesis, 61% earned contextualization. Similar thing here, 55 thesis, that's low, but this is super high on the contextualization point. Um, and same thing, wow, this is really stunning actually. Only 44% of people earned the thesis on that World War I question, but 77% of people got that contextualization point. Um, and they talked about the different versions there. Last one real quick before we wrap up and I encourage you all, um, that's computer science A, here's principles. Um, here's what we see with principles, similar results to previous years. And um, okay, 11% of people got that perfect score on the create task. 52% earned the program purpose. Um, and here are the other results. Data abstraction was the highest score. And then um, let's see, out of 100 points possible, the digital versions were more difficult than the paper versions. Guys, you will notice this, that for some exams, the college board saying, hey, actually the paper ones were harder. And on other ones, they're saying the digital ones were harder. So that's kind of the breakdown of this. I'm gonna post it for all of you this link. I want you to go fish out what you need. Um, I also wanna send you to this. Um, our Twitter thread. If you don't follow us on Twitter, if you don't follow us here, definitely check out. We're going to be posting updates, memes, and updates all through this week on what information as we get it. So I really appreciate um, all the love and support you guys have given. If you've liked this video, press that like button. Definitely subscribe to our channel. We're going to be posting new information on Twitter, on TikTok, all of all of your favorite social media channels. Um, and we're going to be manifesting fives and fours and the threes and all the scores that are going to help you guys earn credits. One thing I'll just show you on my way out here is when you look at this, this is a map I tweeted as part of this thread. These are all of the places in America that by law, all the ones in blue, are by law are required to give you college credit at your state college. So if you go to the Ohio State University, for example, or a Texas college or a Florida college or Idaho college, with, that's a public university within that state, you are, those, those colleges must give you credit for a three or higher on AP exams. That's awesome. Um, that means that those of you who get that three or four or, or five are locking in college credits for yourselves. So we, so far as we know, uh, Leibuff, I'm saying your name right, um, um, the uh, the, the exams are going to come out at the same time, but definitely reach out to the college board. If you've got questions on that, stay in touch with us here at Marco. Thank you guys for your support and 